Hey, good night. I wanted to provide some context tonight of what I actually do or who we are in having conversations today. I've realized that one of the things I'm not doing is or doing well is storytelling. And it's because selfishly, one of the things I've used social media for is accountability. Accountability, I believe, is key when you're setting goals, especially big, hairy, audacious goals. So back in 2016, one of the things I did is have a countdown. And that really came from a coach that I worked with that explained that it's easier to come down the hill than go up the hill. Yeah. So you'd always see me counting down with my goals. So even though the goal this time is having 1200 conversations, you'll always see me counting down and it has worked. Um, yeah. So that coach was Trevor. He taught me that and that was, it was beautiful, right? It worked. Um, the context is coming from the storytelling of who we are and what we do, because one of the things I'm doing when I'm doing these lives, I'm sharing it on different platforms and there are people who do not know me. And I realized today after having a, con well, a couple of conversations with storytellers um, in the US specifically, as, as I thought to myself, wait a minute, I am doing these lives, simply starting, putting the logs, excuse showing who has been on the podcast and many people do not know who this guy is right so more than who i am my family and how my story has unfolded i believe is important and the purpose of this is really to help inspire others to understand that it doesn't matter where you are or who you are, that once you're following your purpose, uh, you know, there's a different value that comes with going after goals because you can achieve goals without it being part of your purpose, right? They're, they're just things that you could put in place and achieve goals, but what we've really set up to do is, is to focus on going after things of purpose. Again, that's what we're doing at this time. So what you're seeing before you, it's basically what we do, right? So 12 minute convos podcast is the conversations I share by interviewing people. That podcast started off in 2016 and I was able to set a goal uh, to have 1,585 conversations in, in one year. Procrastination got the better of me and um, it took me eight months before I actually started. I got 76 conversations done and then I visited a conference, but you know what? Let me scroll. Let me scroll and show you. Right. So the stories here. So you have Angel Jones there, the podcaster and Amanda Jones, the poet, the amazing poet. So 2012, here we go. Here's the story as summarized as can be. So Amanda and Angel are impacted financially when Angel lost his job. So in hindsight, over time, I didn't lose my job, but there was a strike and I was out of a job for three months, but it seemed as though it was heading to us losing our jobs, but we didn't have a salary. Well, I didn't have a salary. Amanda was still working. And then, you know, I had an encounter. I'm going to go really quickly, but still cover the basics so that if you want, you could go to amazonenterprise.com and simply read the story, right? But because of that encounter and, and being able to connect with Dave Ramsey's teachings, um, as well as Rabbi Daniel Lappin, 
I was able, Amanda and I were both able to get out of that huge amount of debt. Uh, this is us at Nashville, uh, Tennessee. And this wall behind here, it's, it's where people do their debt-free scream and they write their names. Now, we didn't get to be there on the same year that we got became debt free but a year after we visited for a conference a coaching course financial coaching master series and yeah that that's us there's amanda with a long hair back then and they are they are at the caribbean people right who are who may seem overdressed in terms of the amount of clothes they're wearing but wow it was cool right so this was february and there were people i still don't understand how people are wearing short pants but there were people wearing short pants right uh so nevertheless we continued returned to trinidad began helping families yeah i also had my second son 2014 Amaziah. Did I miss Jaziel here? So Jaziel is here. Jaziel occurred 2009. Yeah. So anyway, so became debt free. And this is us with Dave Ramsey here. So that's a big thing because you read the book and then you put the principles in place. And then you actually get the photo op opportunity, right? Like the photo opportunity and you meet the person and it's, it's fun, yeah? But the thing that, that keyed in this for me today as well is today is the date, the anniversary date of Amanda releasing her first book. It was 20, was it 2000? Yeah, here we go. It was 2015. Poems for you and your neighbors, health disorders simplified. And that was a task. Ah, Amanda got this. She started writing poems for patients while she was at work to simplify things. And over time, I, I loved the poems and I suggested that she create a book. And wow, that was a process, right? But the book was launched. We had an event, it was October 10, uh, so that's 10, 10, double 10, 2015. It was just an amazing time. And that was the first book. So anyways, running quickly here. So then she does her second book. I go to local school, uh, Institute of Banking and Finance of Trinidad and Tobago to become a certified financial advisor. Time goes by, then we return to Tennessee for a conference by Dan Miller. Dan is no longer with us, but Dan has a podcast, 48 Days to the Work You Love. And, you know, he was listening to that podcast that got me keyed in here there's you see this guy right here so this guy here bruce coleman yeah he's amazing so this is amanda and i right here <laughs> mm. this is don miller here amazing guy but yeah so there we are at this conference and that's where in august I decided to, to continue with the podcast. I was at the event and I heard a voice say never give up. So I returned to Trinidad with 76 episodes. I wanted to get 1585. I'm a very competitive person. The reason I wanted that amount is there's a podcast I was listening to. Uh, his name is John Lee Dumas and he was doing an episode a day, every day. And I thought if I could do what he's done in terms of the amount of conversations he's had, then I would have the ability to develop a skill that that he has. Um, so there, that was the number he would have been at at the end of the year. 
and I used that as my competitive push. And then when I returned to Trinidad and started from 77, I had a very good friend, Tom Schwab, suggest I create a Guinness um, world record, Guinness Book world record. So he explained how to apply. I applied and then they said it will take three months before they give you a reply. And then they, they shut the thing down, right? They said that it's not quantifiable is what i got back right something like that right like don't quote me on the thing but they basically said it's not possible to to apply for what i am doing so but i had a thousand and one conversations i i got a thousand and one plus the 76 so a thousand and one in three months yeah, and that was just amazing because of the people I connected with. Uh, you know, the numbers weren't as good as the way I'm doing it today. I started and didn't have as many people when I began. But, oh my, like, the numbers are something like, like 100 in the first month, 300 in the second month. And then six something in the third month and the numbers represent what momentum looks like when you're going after a goal and that's why it's so important to hold on right through so again like if you are setting that goal don't give up right don't give up so anyway because of what we were doing in the podcast space we were invited to podfest i had a conversation with chris kremitsos he's the guy that does podfest and we were invited to podfest we got well i'm saying we amanda and i went and we but i spoke at the event right it was really cool then in 2017 stephen scoggins invited me to north carolina and this was a this was when like i put on facebook i did a post and i said who's in North Carolina and people responded like almost immediately and while being at Transform You Live, which was an amazing event put on by Steven, I in in the so it's the morning I'm going to the conference, it's a day conference, and then in the evening I'm meeting people who who are driving some an hour who would drive who drove out to meet me at the hotel and that's when and i mean just to give credit to those that came out it was multiple people and like i went to dinner with one crew like right and then i actually met my aunt who i hadn't spoken with for years or seen for years and you know, so that was a blend of things that I could that I thought, hey, you know, this 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 may be something here. So fast forward to 2018, I'm faced with a decision. Do I go into a property opportunity or do I go across the 48 states and Canada? to meet the people uh, that were on the podcast. And history has it that we went the route of getting through 48 states and Canada. Now, go the goal was not to do 48 states. The goal was simply to meet people, but it evolved as we were there. And there's just a lot of stories that I have to share, but the goal evolved and, and it was just amazing um, what we did. And this is what the map looks like. I say in 12 weeks, Amanda likes the 80 days concept, right? 48 states and Canada in 80 days. And this in itself is just something that we're so happy we did when we did it. So in 2019, I resigned my day job to become a full-time entrepreneur that sounds so great but the reality of it is is another story so amanda gave birth to our third son 
And then she also launched a total of four books that year, the Rhyming Bible Bubble series. Rhyming, can you say that quickly? Rhyming Bible Bubbles, Rhyming Bible Bubbles. So 2020, after resigning, right? 2020, boom, the world shuts down. At least it feels like that. 2021, and we did some good things during this time. You know, it was, it was, it was interesting. Like we planted, we had fun outside time. This was fun. 2021, Amanda and Angel set a goal to write a book. So we were saying, all right, it's time for us to write our story. And we, we started with it. And then the plan changed because we decided that it would change. Amanda's mother was diagnosed with a progressive lung disease. And we decided we will we'll commit and dedicate our time to, to working with her and helping her, helping her father. And um, yeah, that's what we did. And again, 2020, March next year. Amanda mother's Amanda mother passed away and you know everything that goes with this has been reflected on the podcast conversations I've been having so far it's grief is tough I don't know if you could prepare for grief and you know Amanda is the first who's lost a parent um I've not I have my parents and, you know, the reality of the love we shared for Amanda's mother and knowing what that felt like is, I'm not, it's like a preparation, if you would. So I do attempt to cherish as much as I can the time I have with my parents because this losses it's tough it's tough yeah so so yeah so amanda mother died and you know one of the things i've heard on the podcast consistently is the concept of someone passed and then in so doing something else came about um while we were visiting amanda's mother she would write amanda would write even though we weren't attempting to complete the book in a like in a big goal way or having a deadline date. But wow, Amanda wrote some really, really beautiful pieces while we were there. And as you can see, there's no shortage of plants and flowers. It's just her style. So that was a fun time. But what happened is we one of the companies or what we do was birthed which was self-published easily and we started to help as a request we were getting to help others publish and as we began helping others publish their books we then published our book which is a caribbean couple's journey to self-discovery in fact we actually have four books in the series completed and we've only released one so far. And we did that for my birthday, my 40th birthday, my first birthday party that I've ever had, right? Um, and this was a picture taken of my family, my three sons, my beautiful wife, and myself. So, for those that are listening or watching or looking on, this is this is how I do what I do. And this is my story. Yeah. So at least part of it, yeah, the, the big the most summarized version. So today, so today, today what happened was interesting. I came out to have these conversations. I'm all goal oriented here. I'm pushing. And, you know, unfortunately, and I believe it's because, so it started with at the beginning of the day. So my, before I went to sleep, 
my phone didn't go to sleep with me, which usually happens as a, as a safety mechanism. And I've not used an alarm system for years, but because I do not want to disappoint anyone by oversleeping, I'm sleeping with this phone with an alarm. Unfortunately, my phone stayed outside, uh, outside of the bedroom. And I woke up and I was hearing birds chirping. And I knew immediately if I'm hearing birds, it's too late because I usually get up at 3.45 to then prep for conversations that start at 4.45 a.m. And unfortunately, I missed some people, right? Even though this morning, today, I would have probably, you know, really hit my goal of what I wanted to. But it's all perspective because of where I started before and what I did. I'm so grateful for what I have gotten, but there's still the competitive side of me that still, you know, cringes at not being able to, to get what I could have gotten. So this is what the layout looks like right now. The first week, which only had one day, right, which I, I, only had one conversation and then cancelled everything else as i've mentioned before so that i could get things in place together with amanda because everything was in a mess right so that was done on that one day second week wow blown out of the park 74 conversations third week 80 conversations momentum is building Fourth week, 81 conversations. It's like A, I'm getting, is it A? I guess that's B, probably B's, right? I'm getting B's and excited and, and managing rest. So you would not believe what it's like having to manage my body as I'm going through these conversations because I'm waking up early and then I'm going to sleep late. So, but it's to be able to have people from different time zones to be facilitated. So I'm not complaining. It's just something that I have to manage. Unfortunately, I believe the test of cutting the grass for the entire day added up. Um, you know, I, I was over exhausted. So yesterday I was not feeling well and I went to sleep and and unfortunately didn't get up so missed a few people this today today unfortunately it just it like zoom would not work and i believe it's because of what was going on with the storm and it probably affected our internet but zoom just would not work so i missed a few conversations and had to cancel. Had, well, let me not say cancel. I canceled, but with the request that people reschedule. So this guy, the red star indicates it's my fault. So this guy, Derek Stewart, an Australian guy that I was excited to speak with. Unfortunately, I missed him. And Sylvia Silvers, it's the same thing, missed her. So this is this is five. 5, 8, 4, 45, 5, 5, 15. And then Carrie, I did have a conversation with, which was very cool because I came on the conversation and I said, she's like, how are you doing? I said, hey, I overslept. And she said, me too. And her thing is relatability, right? So we, we had a fun conversation. We, we opened up with being vulnerable and it just was great this conversation sandra so sandra was around 9 a.m and i'm going and things are flowing i speak with kelly she's by the lake she's looking at the swans meredith her laughter is exactly like what you see it is there uh tusca brooklyn she has on her hat thick new york accent Again, having fun, she asked a relevant question too. She said, hey, how come how come you're doing the podcast, but I haven't seen any new episodes released? And I explained to her what's happening. It's basically 
where we've started, we have almost 300 conversations recorded and we're in the process of editing. Very cool question, right? Barbara Ann, this is where it started. So Barbara Ann comes on and she's sung in all robotic, right? And she has like four headsets that she tests to make sure it's not her, a mic or her headsets. It just didn't work. You know, it, and that was the first telltale. Um, then Amy came on again. We we tested, we tried, and Amy's been. This is like Amy's third time of attempting. Unfortunately, things just keep happening. So, all of these other conversations is where I realize, okay, let me cancel before you know, because it's already an inconvenience. So all of these people, Michelle, oh, Chris, Gary, oh, Gary is a good friend we met in Los, Los Angeles, Karen, and then Melanie. Oh, I was excited to speak with her. She's moved to Rwanda. I wanted to find out about that. I wanted to connect her with someone. Um, and so it goes, right? Uh, then I started and, you know, unfortunately this person didn't show up. I don't know what has happened. There's a, there's Hurricane Milton, well, Storm, Hurricane Milton that has hit, it's going on. I don't know who's not coming because of that. So let's hope all is well with her. And then Blondie is who I connected with, had a great conversation with her. Haitian background, right? With Jamaican ex-husband is how she described it. Fun conversation. Amy, heart of gold, jumps in here and talks about, you know, what she's done from the perspective of uh, accidents she's had. Just amazing conversations. Oh, Pamela. So Pamela was driving to Yosemite. Well, I mean, I say where she was driving to, but because... I don't know if she wants anyone to know that, but she's driving and her, um, we just rescheduled because she didn't have um, headsets. So the echo was coming back. Um, then I had, oh, this was a good conversation. So uh, Grazina, right? Grazina from Poland, her husband had a shoulder challenge and didn't want to take the surgery. And basically, they found out from their neighbor, again, highlighting the power of a conversation here, yeah? found out from her neighbor about something, right? Because she has had a similar situation and did surgeries and tested all types of things. How does she pronounce it? Neutraceuticals is basically what she got into and... You know, she's a professor, went the route of going and studying this thing. And yeah, she looks great though. She's 70, going to be 73 years old. So definitely going to look into that. Then I had Randy. Woof, Randy. Psst. Broadcaster extraordinaire. Voice, tone, mic, humor, you know. But the thing that touched my heart is she said she has two children and her son suffers from mental illness. And she just explained and expressed how she uses hope in the midst of that. Again, beautiful conversation. Rhonda, another great conversation. And then I ended off with Nancy, which was... A good night yeah so unfortunately out of 25 conversations one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen were missed because of me and two were missed because of life so it is what it is Thursday 10th of October daily conversation log 905 remaining. Good night, folks.